Ni Hao from, from Chinatown, Chinatown in Washington, D.C. We're in Madison and Ivan, and today's mad adventure is exploring Chinatown in our nation's capital. One of our favorite things is to explore these little cultural areas and be reminded of the fact that the USA and really every country over the world has taken influence from everywhere else. So it is very fun to explore and just see some of that directly. So let's go. Didn't have anything to add, I tried. About six months ago, Ivan and I started traveling full time while starting our own businesses. We spent a month in Cancun, several months in Mexico City, hit the slopes in Colorado, and now we're in Washington, DC, where we'll be spending the next few months because we won a video contest where we get to live rent free in four US cities for a year with a company called Landing. It is bananas. <laughs> Today we'll be taking in the sights, hitting up some of Chinatown's coolest shops, and exploring Chinese traditions with a delicious Lunar New Year feast. It's the fanciest trash can I've ever seen. In case you aren't fluent, this means and pizza. So this is a very popular Chinese chain uh, called Hot Belly. Nando's, this is one of our favorite. That says Nando's Peri Peri. This store has everything. Huge drawers and jars of Chinese herbs and medicines, loads of foods and snacks, and home decor from dishes to art to furniture to anything you could ever dream of. This is a $3,000 cabinet, so let's walk carefully. We're gonna stand on this side of the store and admire these from a distance. Wall greens. <laughs> Said to have been where the conspirators plotted the abduction of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln. What? Can you kind of see where they were making the dumplings too? So this is where the hockey team plays, Capital One Arena. Oh, this is the National Portrait Gallery. I've been here. Whose portraits have you seen? So there was a whole section where you could take your own portrait and then they put it up in the National Portrait Gallery. So I've actually seen my portrait here. I was <laughs> thinking like George Washington, <laughs> little Benjamin Franklin. No, we need to go back there. <laughs> it's a very authentic chain in China, Chipotle. You probably never heard of it. But here it is in Chinatown, really cool. So we talked earlier today about how the world can feel so divided right now, but really we as a nation and as a world are heavily influenced by each other and have so much to learn from each other still. 
And a great way to experience that, that blending of cultures is through food. Oh, yeah. So today we are here at China Chilicano, which is a restaurant by one of our all-time favorite chefs, Jose Andres. It is about how Peruvian food has been influenced by so many countries. But one of those that we are focusing in on today is China. In the 19th century, Chinese settlers came from China to Peru, settled there, brought their own cooking traditions, and today we are so excited to gobble up some of that while also getting to taste some of the Lunar New Year menu. So we're going to get to dive into a little bit of the traditions associated with Lunar New Year. I'm really excited. Any excuse to visit a Jose restaurant is great in my books, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm like already salivating. This is ready to do this. Yeah. <laughs> We're starting with spring rolls, which are eaten during the Lunar New Year to symbolize wealth. Take some of that. Mmm. Oh, really good crisp. But the filling, so juicy. And the sauce, super tangy, really strong citrus flavor to it. I really like it. It's got a really good crisp on it. I'm not a huge spring roll guy, but this is good stuff. <laughs> so the cool thing is that the spring roll symbolized wealth, and in my family we always had cabbage to symbolize wealth for the new year, and there's cabbage in these spring rolls. So that tradition kind of works in both ways. Now we have rice cakes with mushrooms and bok choy and pork and all sorts of good stuff going on in it. So in Chinese, this is a homophone that sounds like year high. And uh, so this is all about when you eat it, it's supposed to symbolize you just like getting into a higher position in a year, higher wealth, higher like everything, just like increasing in the good things and goodness in your life throughout the year. <laughs> These are good. And this rich, meaty flavor. Super umami, super rich. If you haven't had rice cakes before, it's like rice, but kind of made into this little patty. And it is just super good and like gummy. Tastes like it's gonna be a great year. Okay, I'll stop hogging it. I'll let I even have a little. Wow, look at that guy, he's looking at me, making eye contact. <laughs> so now we have a whole fish, which is one of the most traditional things to eat during the Lunar New Year. It symbolizes prosperity, a whole fish head to tail, head to tail, because it symbolizes the beginning of the new year and the end of the old year. Then they actually encourage you to eat from tail to head as well to start off, you know, celebrating the end of this year and then finish celebrating the year to come. Um, also, there are a bunch of herbs on it to symbolize an abundant harvest. And it just looks amazing. The chef actually came out and served it to us. He said that his mom loves this. So I feel like the fact that it's mom approved, I'm really excited to give it a shot. Okay, I gotta start at the tail. Mm. Mm. Really good. I definitely taste cilantro. This like delicious tomatoey sauce on it. Mm. It's really sweet. Perfect texture. I love how they serve this too. It's like a what do you call it? A reverse butterfly? Like it's like an inside out fish essentially. They deboned it and like the inside of the fish is full of this yummy tomatoey sauce. Mm. Supposed to leave some fish on the table. That way you have enough to like carry you over, you know, to show that you're gonna have an abundance this year. But I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that. This is yummy. has a really interesting combo of like a fried fish. That's a more savory fish too, it's a savory. But then the sweet sauce. It's like almost like a 
nice sweet glaze that they got. Man. Usually sweet sauces like this, not my thing. Not even a sweet barbecue kind of guy. I don't love this. I think that is by definition the least we could have left on that plate. What do you mean there's a little bit left for the new year? <laughs> yeah, we love this little guy. Oh, eyeball. <laughs> that was delicious. I'm so glad we splurged for that. That was worth it, for sure. I'm very happy with our life choices. That was delicious. And we still have dessert! It's called Tang Guan, and it is a glutinous rice on the outside, right? So it's that sticky rice. On the inside, you have a burnt honey with black sesame. Both things that I love. And then uh, you have a ginger sauce on the, the outside with uh, some soy and, uh, and sprinkled on top a little gold flake, because why not? This symbolizes togetherness and being with friends and family uh, during the year to come. Celebrating. All right. Right off the bat, love the sweetness level. Very mild, which lets you really taste the sesame inside. It's like this um, riddlier texture. Little, not hard, it's still very soft, but that sesame packs such a good flavor. And honestly, like, it's this perfect pairing between sweet, light sweet, but, but a lot of savory going on there too. Oh man, I'm going to eat another one quickly so I can share because you want to have this warm for sure. It's almost like a, a dessert soup dumpling. That was crazy. It <laughs> like a roller coaster in a bite. It was good, but yeah, it does. It has like the, the kind of spicy bitterness of ginger. And it has the, the sweetness of the honey, but also the burnt part of the honey. Yeah, it's so interesting. It's good. I like it for sure. Uh, and look at all the gold on this bite. Mm. What do we do with the last one? Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> no, I eat half of it. Eat half of it. You got scared. He is not ready to fight. Okay, so I've been eating all of mine in one bite. I think it's better half. But now you can kind of see that you told me to eat them all in one bite, and now you think it's better half? What the heck? So this is black sesame, which is similar but a little different than white sesame, what we're more used to. White sesame is like nutty. It's 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 like a um, kind of clean, light flavor to it. Um, black sesame, on the other hand, is like it's it's like darker, darker twin. It's got it's like a grittier texture. It's got more of that like uh, savory, like almost a bitter, bitter, more bitter flavor uh, going on. So I personally prefer black sesame. It's it's a lot more like complex of a of a flavor. So interesting. So weird. Like objectively. Not something you're gonna get very, very many places, but absolutely delicious. I love it. My kind of dessert. Great finish. I feel so together with all of you. Uh -uh. So my family always does black eyed peas and cabbage for the new year to have black eyed peas for luck, cabbage for wealth. We still had our our wealth with uh, the spring rolls earlier. This is a little tastier than black eyed peas and cabbage, I feel like. And so many more things. I'm not just gonna be lucky and wealthy this year. Have togetherness, have prosperity, and continue to raise to new heights. Yeah, I like it better. <laughs> It is so cool to see that while everyone has their own traditions, they can actually be so similar, even to a country 7,000 miles away. We loved tasting these traditions and doing a little exploring in our new city. 
Thanks so much for joining us for this mad venture. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. And until then, live your own mad venture.